Hi guys and welcome back to another guide where we are going to tell you how you can improve your Subaru or Impreza STI or just a Subaru. Last time we did a guide on how you can improve your Nissan GTR and after many requests from you, you wanted to know how can you make a track car out of a Subaru. So before we start, if you want to find out more for in the future about any other type of cars or more about the Nürburgring or car tuning in general, make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends. Let us know in the comments what type of car we should do next time. And also for any other questions, let us know. So let's get started. Last time, again, we did something on the GTR, which is actually a pretty modern car. And now we're going back in time, like almost 30 years back in time to find out why a couple of other components are more essential that you should not put, well, actually not necessary to change on any modern type of car. So, dear Oleg, take it away. Hi guys, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so our today's topic is a Subaru. Uh, we have two of them here. One is a two-door first generation and one is a really unicorn Subaru. It's a Impreza WRX STI RER. So it's, yeah. Keep attacking the Nürburgring. It's even a bit more special. A lot of people are gonna hate us for it. Well, not us, but <laughs> whoever did it, yeah, the, the steering wheel edition. is on the left yeah. side. It's a black edition, so it's really rare. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it have uh, oh, carbon fiber, carbon fiber. And uh, pretending if you're in a tank. <laughs> No, on a serious note, it's actually a pretty special episode for me to cover those cars because my first car was a Subaru Impreza GC8, which eventually ended up with 705 horsepower. So today we're going to tell you what to do and what not to do because we went through all these mistakes, so you should not go through them. Yeah, so uh, from where we should start. Um, when we talk about the, these cars, uh, we should understand what we come from a uh, rally world. So they are... Uh, come because uh, Focus Sierra was a really uh, Ford Sierra was a really uh, successful car, and then Japan automotive manufacturer uh, decided to step into rally world, and they modified standard cars what we have Impreza's, and most problematic situation uh, for you will be what it starts from Impreza. So basically, if you will have if you have WRX or STI. It's uh, mean what you have just the Impreza, but uh, tune it uh, from factory. So it's pretty uh, long travel suspension car. And it's uh, have really, uh, pardon, weak chassis. Yeah. So when you will uh, put it on a better suspension, first situation, what you will have, uh, your chassis will start to Bent. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, like most problematic situation with this car. So when you want to uh, use the car on a uh, racetrack, not one or two time, but a bit often, mm -hmm. you should think about it in advance because in other side you will have cracked chassis, uh, cracks on the firewall, on the rear, and uh, yeah. Etc. Etc. I think this can be said for a lots of lots of lots of cars in general, like icons of tuning, because those cars are of course based on the WRC, the winning cars, amazing Colin McRae, you name it. But in reality, when you buy a car in shop, even when it is an STI, compared to the actual race car, I'm sorry, I used to own one, one of these cars. It's piece of shit in comparison. You cannot compare these cars. It's just shit. Simply as that. The foundation is great. You can use lots of tuning components and put it onto this, but never ever buy a stock car and think like, oh, well, they race with it and uh, I can do that and it will be all fine. No, there's lots of work that needs to be done, unfortunately. Now I'm really not sure. Are you a Subaru guy or not? Do you have a Subaru? How you can tell like shit? <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Misha, I don't understand. So uh, what do you should do? Sorry, just one more thing, because you said when you put different suspension on, we are not going to talk about different types of suspension, but yes, in general, you need to replace suspension and tires, but there are so many choices. This is something that you just need to see for yourself what your budget is. 
but we are going to do uh, talk about other important upgrades yeah our brakes later on but first we're st starting with suspension comp the braces so yeah we will start from a chassis because if you will not do this uh, before you hit the track with your car it can cost you a lot mm -hmm. so that's why we're starting from this point because it's not a simple thing it's not an easy thing and uh, no many people know what what will be with your car so uh, one of japan manufacturer who really uh, well known it's a Cusco. they uh, made products like this so it's a, not a just a simple brace which reinforce your chassis from one suspension point to second suspension point now it's a construction which uh, connected to the floor so in the end you will have uh, behind your rear seat complete free angle mm. so it will be somewhere here inside mm -hmm. so it's free angle so your body uh, will be much more rigid uh, same situation uh, with the front end but this car is uh, already tuned from a factory so when you open the hood you will see the brace here which reinforce the firewall so it will not crack mm -hmm. yeah so if you don't have it you should have it before you go on a track uh, basically Subaru did a lot of job in this but uh, yeah you still need to add something when you take a look in this car uh, basically from outside is uh, just Impreza GC8 but inside is converted to STI 2007 components and STI sorry 2007 have uh, the gray brace you can see it so it's a factory detail uh, which also prevent the body flex this car particularly have a half a roll cage uh, mm -hmm. and our things oh by the way small topic uh, do you see this uh, white tank yeah and do you know on GG2 RS you have water injection on an intercooler. Yeah. Something from 21 century, yeah? Yeah. So this car have it. Yeah. It was there from a factory. And yeah. this car if, also. If you would have a 22B or, mm, or a yeah. Type R. STI. Yeah, STI, STI is in yeah. It. STI uh, have the system, uh, so it spray water on top of intercooler here to reduce the intake temperature. And uh, yeah, the system work great. Uh, so both Subaru and Mitsubishi, I think, have it in, yeah. in 90s. So when you uh, reinforce your chassis, uh, you can put the sway bar or suspension uh, on your car and be safe. What's uh, the chassis is safe? But when you put the sway bar, don't forget to put the holders to the sway bar because uh, OEM can be thrown it away mm -hmm. when. Uh, uh, the sway bar is too thick, especially rear one. When, when you go like for 25 to 27 millimeter, uh, you can uh, broke the OEM holder from a... It's actually a funny point because in the past you would see people put this as one of the first upgrades and you think like, haha, cannot afford a roll cage or just like some fancy upgrade. But actually it is important because back in the days, the chassis were just like way too soft. The type of metal that we use and the technology behind the chassis, it was too soft to start with. You could see that even the factory tuned car, the STI would have a brace. And nowadays the cars such as GTR or different type of GTR, they don't have it. I mean, they, because the chassis by itself is already strong enough. I'm not going to even talk about carbon fiber monocoque chassis, but and especially now when the chassis are over 20 years old, well, this one, this one is not yet over 20 years old, then you definitely need stronger components. And not only regarding to chassis, but also regarding the wheels. When you go on a track, you should uh, be 100% sure what your wheel starts and wheel nuts is okay. Treat on it is good. It uh, can be tighted and tighted and everything is uh, correct because otherwise, uh, it's a complicated story because this car is uh, uh, not the same with German way. It has no wheel bolts, it has studs. And when you uh, do, did something wrong with treat, you should change the stud or it will be damaged. And then you will just uh, cannot replace the wheel or take it out from car. So it's a huge headache. So be sure 
this part of your car is okay after the winter and uh, yeah, everything should be good. Mm -hmm. Then? Yeah, next uh, weak point from these cars, uh, all bushing on the car is uh, basically uh, a bit softer than it should be. So this particular part is uh, um, transmission mode or engine no, no. mode? It's, it's, a, it's a part of a shifting system. Mm. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So this is rear mount and this is a front mount from a shifting. Uh, so you have uh, engine mounts, transmission mounts and everything in your car, even rear subframe, it's mounted on the rubber. And this rubber is not um, young anymore. It's not uh, good anymore because the car is uh, not really young anymore. So you should uh, replace it or take care about it, or at least you should check if everything is okay. And if you have possibility, please change it to reinforce the rubber or polyurethane. Poly yeah, it's, it doesn't matter really. Uh, it should be good and uh, a bit harder than stock because when you uh, in Subaru, have really weak uh, engine mounts. It's possible to do misshift because uh, your shifting system is uh, uh, connected to the engine with arm, not a cable, but the arm. Now there's going to be a lot of people that can use that excuse. I misshifted because my <laughs> yeah, so. suspension was bad. So when you go full throttle or uh, trying to do flat foot shift, if your software do it, make it possible for you. You must understand what engine can uh, really have high travel, you know, from one side to other. And in this moment, when it's go down, you are shifting. So you can miss shift with this car. Mm -hmm. And uh, better to have a bit harder engine mount, transmission mount, when uh, the car feeling is like more one piece, like it's, it's better. Better to do. Uh, the gear oil? Yeah, the gear oil is something uh, special. So this car, uh, the same like Ferrari, the same like Porsche, have differential and gearbox in one case. And to be honest, it must be different oil for these two pieces. So differential must have GL4, no, GL5 oil, and uh, gearbox GL4. So it's two type of different oil which uh, must be there, but in reality is one case in one oil. So you should know what you should use special oil, which is uh, made specially for, yeah, Porsche, Ferrari, Alfa Romeo and Subaru. So oil made for working with differential and synchronizers uh, and good for both. Mm -hmm. So this one is really, um, you should know because otherwise when you go on the track and uh, warm up your gearbox to 90 degrees, let's say it's easy, uh, you will have problem with shifting mm -hmm. because your synchronizers uh, will not stop the gears so good like it should be. Yeah. So this is about the transmission. Our stuff with transmission, so when you have WRX, you have five speed transmission, which can be broken if you have more than 350 horsepower. Even less. I had 280, mm. but because of the age, like the, the, the third gear, uh, gear usually snaps quite easy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but when you have six speed gearbox, which is basically made by Gitrack, if I'm not wrong, uh, it's bulletproof transmission. So we personally made several cars which run 9.7 uh, second on quarter mile with stock gearbox, standard gearbox and uh, raw tires like Michelin or something like this. And it working, never break, so you can destroy the synchronizers, but not the gearbox. So it's really, yeah, really good. I had the My Time Attack car, uh, 705 horsepower, 862 newton meters and on stock six speed STI gearbox and it was perfectly fine. Yep. It's actually that engine that got destroyed because of the, <laughs> the dry sump. When we put yeah. the car on slicks, it had no dry sump. But anyway. Next topic is the brakes. Uh, and let me just tell one more time as an ex-Subaru owner, <laughs> the worst brakes, because the stock brakes of, well, the, you can see that the, these ones are upgraded, but the stock GC8 or even like later models, you, yeah, can, WRX. WRX, you can put 15 inch wheels on it. 
I have on a Volkswagen up, I have 15 inch wheels. And those perform like even better, the, the brakes of over up than the old, well, of a heavier car. Because yeah. just like in comparison. But anyway, after I've expressed my emotional <laughs> concern, we can move on and telling you that you should definitely upgrade the brakes. Yep. So if you have a stock shit system, you should obviously put a bigger caliper system. Can you recognize system. it? This is Brembo. I know it's Brembo from it's SDI, Brembo. but I mean, I'm just pointing like, in, in most, because those are like the most affordable cars right now, I would say the GC8s, well, they probably go to value, but I mean, it's just something that people buy a relatively affordable car or cheap car, quotation marks, because again, budget is very relative. And people overlook the brakes. They think, oh, okay, one chip tuning, and you have a lot of horsepower, and yeah, but yep, this is something. Yep, yep. So the brake situation is the same. It depends uh, which car you bought. When you have WRX, you should think about the brake upgrade completely, at least to the STI level, because uh, your front disc is 295 millimeter. It's really less than modern Ford Focus, let's say 1.5 liter engine, something like this. So it's really, it's a small brakes and it's not enough definitely. So you need to go or to STI use it system or to something like this, it's much better. It's a six uh, piston stop tech brakes. Why it's much better? So basically STI have a Brembo caliper, which is uh, really good for piston caliper. Uh, for that time it was, yeah, it was perfect. But now uh, we can uncover the problem of a brake. So that caliper have no bridge. Mm. So what does it mean? Uh, when it warm up, it start to be flexy, so it's go, it start moving, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but a lot of super owner can complain what when we bought a car, bought new car, the feeling of a brake pedal was like perfect. It was hard like a stone, and it was perfect. And when you drive like one season or two season on a racetrack, it start to be weaker and weaker and when you refill it with new fluid everything what you can do you are done but it's never be so good like it was because caliper just lose the rigidness or i don't know how rigidity. to say rigidity yeah and this caliper is more modern so it have a bridge so it's connected and will never have this problem mm. Yeah, so basically a cheaper upgrade would be an SDI upgraded older, well, uh, better type of brake kit from the OEM, so to say. And well, if you have the money to spend and you want to do a lot of track time, definitely consider a big brake kit. When, when you want to use used STI brakes, you should know what's uh, in 2005 year Subaru changed the uh, wheel pattern from uh, 5 to 100 to 5 to 114. 114. Yeah, because the wheel bearing case was uh, also not big enough and it uh, don't work a lot of time. So they changed the pattern to bigger size to, to put the bigger bearing. So when you bind the brakes to your WRX, which is still 5 to 100, you should know it yeah. in the beginning because uh, it will not fit. Yeah, sorry, maybe I a bit more detailed when it's planned because uh, I'm also ex Subaru owner. But yesterday when I talked with my wife, sorry about this, how to say? Personal off topic. Yeah, personal off topic. Yeah, uh, yesterday I said, yeah, tomorrow will be a good day. We will talk about Subaru and I am feeling like a Subaru guy. And she said, yeah, but do you know you had, have had much more Evo in your life? And when I start calculating, yeah, sorry, but I have much more Evo in my life. <laughs> but in any case, uh, but Evo is less headache than a Subaru. <laughs> no, it's have completely, uh, it's a completely different car. It's, it's also really good, but the Subaru have so much more charisma. What's, uh, mm. yeah, I, I really like it still. Uh, and that's why we, my partner Dmitry still have this car, maybe about this reason, because he's also thinking what he's still Subaru guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the brakes, everything like unusual cars. You should have proper pads uh, from street legal to race pads. You should Maybe we can go on because when we did the GTR video, a lot of people yeah. asked what makes a pad street legal and what makes it not street mm. legal. What's the difference? Why? Yeah. Uh, why we have this situation? It's easy because of quantity of production. So when uh, Firoda start to do these pads, 
uh, DS2000. Uh, they made them a lot and it was started like in the beginning of 80s or 90s, I don't know. And uh, it was easier, much easier time to get this R label, you know, and be street legal now. And now uh, every pad manufacturer like Performance Friction or Endless or Hawk, when we think about to do street legal pads, it will cost them so much money, but it will not cover it with so small amount of uh, pads which we sell. So race pads, it's, it's not like normal street. So it's, uh, it's much less quantity. So it's basically only the reason that the manufacturer chooses not to go through le street legal approval process because it's gonna be too much money. Yeah. yeah. That's the only, it's, it's it, will, it, will be, it will be not covered, you know, yeah. from, uh, from uh, so except the pads and fluid and brake lines, which is uh, definitely you should have in your car, uh, we will cover today two small smart things. Uh, this is uh, just a sheet of, uh, from titanium, just piece of metal, one millimeter, uh, white titanium, because from one side is light, from uh, other side it's the best uh, uh, temperature, isolation material, what you can get. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can have it between the pet and caliper somewhere here. And then you will not uh, transfer the heat from uh, your pet to the piston and to the fluid. Mm -hmm. So fluid will start boiling much later when without this piece. You know that McLaren comes stock with these parts? On the, on the caliber, so it's actually, well, probably maybe other supercars as well, but we've been changing brake pads on the McLaren every like two, three days, so that's why. Yeah, Porsche also do this, and we produce this uh, stuff especially for Subaru because, yeah, it's really often when you boil the fluid with these cars. Mm -hmm. uh, second uh, thing, it's uh, just a sticker, but really good one. Uh, I've seen it also on, on our M4 uh, from PFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, when you put it on the car, uh, mm -hmm. After a race event, you will know what's happening with your brakes. Did you overheat it? What's happening with fluid? Why you lose your brakes? Or what's happening with left side or right side? Maybe it's not working so stable in all cars. So it's cheap, but really a uh, good part. And when you want to do research, it's, uh, yeah, it's the best option what you can okay. have. Yeah, then again, uh, good braided lines and the, the the brake fluid. This is something we explained like in the GTR video, so pr probably you can just go there and find out. One more small thing okay. about the brakes. Uh, uh, so in this car, uh, the firewall is also a bit flexy and your master brake cylinder is connected to the firewall. So when you push the brake, you basically push the, your firewall to the front. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of manufacturers made the brake master cylinder stopper. And it's not a joke because we made uh, some research and we take a look. Uh, sometimes it's more than a centimeter of a brake master cylinder traveling. Oh, wow. Yeah, on this car. So if you want to do proper car for the track use, you should have it also. Mm -hmm. It's cheap, but it's like something what you must have. Yeah. Next is uh, everything related to the engine. So, so always just like safety first, guys, and then upgrade the engine, not the other way around what many people do. Yeah, That's we, just bad. We will not talk about the engine upgrade. We will not talk about the power. We will, not, we will talk about the safety and reducing your cost, avoid the, some stupid things. I mean, these are performance upgrades, but they also bring the safety yeah, of the engine. Yeah, so it's yeah. like two, two, well, the same, but what, what I meant regarding Let, Let's say this will not add the power to your car. As much as will, a different turbocharger, but... Yeah, but it will keep the, car, the power there, you know. Yes, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> it's prevent to lose the power. So your car, uh, the Subaru is a uh, engine control unit working uh, based on mass airflow sensor. So it's basically calculated the volume of air which come into the inside the engine. Uh, this means what all horses, which is... Uh, uh, under your hood is really important because when you will lose your air, the all calculation of the ECU will be wrong and you can destroy the engine. So you should have proper silicone or original horses and it must be without any holes or leaking or other things because it's really important. 
same case about the, uh, the, the clamps. Clamps, yeah. clamps, yeah. So uh, basically, this is a small piece which comes directly from WRC. It's a cheaper version of uh, Wiggins clamps or our construction. It's based from two pieces. One is uh, spring, mm -hmm. which have two waves, which you make much more load on the surface of your hose. Mm -hmm. And second piece is also spring, which made constant preload on your on your hoses. Yeah. Why it's uh, so important? Because uh, when you warm up the engine and temperature of hose uh, can reach like 100 degree or 120 degree, uh, the size of uh, all parts start to change it. It starts to uh, go bigger and bigger. And when it's cold down, it starts to be smaller. So in this case, you can lose your piping because of temperature extension. And this part have a spring, so preload on your hose is constant. It's cold or warm, doesn't matter. It have constant preload, and uh, this will prevent any problem with horses. Mm -hmm. So easy, but really good thing. Also, this it's really uh, <laughs> important thing on your Subaru. Uh, this is uh, this triangle is uh, working with uh, boost control, and have restrictor inside. So when you will do something like changing the small pieces to the silicone or other things. Please be sure what it, everything is like it was from factory. So you can see the restriction, restrictor is here. It's just small peel with mul, one millimeter uh, hole inside, which you connected to a boost control, doesn't matter. So it should be there mm -hmm. and it should be properly mounted. Same thing with the uh, cooling system, mm -hmm. yes. spark plugs. Oh. It's a lot of short comedian stories with this uh, car with the spark plugs because it's uh, really complicated to change it from unskilled guys. So please do it uh, in proper mechanic who did it in past or you will have huge headache. And uh, yeah, please did it in advance because when you will have misfire on the racetrack, this means it's you done. Mm -hmm. Basically here uh, around the Nürburgring, you done you will not get the track back because to change the spark plug here on the Subaru, it's especially when it's a weekend, it's near to impossible. So please do it in advance. Yeah, because uh, just in short, because it has a boxer engine, the spark plugs are somewhere there and like... Uh, I can show you. Yeah, no one is just gonna, everyone gonna tell you like, yeah, go buy a new car. We don't have time for this. So spark plugs is directly between the engine and the chassis. Mm -hmm. from that side and, and here to here and to there. And it's complicated to take it out and to put it back without uh, damaging the connectors, uh, coils and everything. So mechanic must know what he doing exactly. Same thing about the catalytic converters. So this car have only one catalytic converter, which is uh, uh, after turbocharger. So it's uh, without, working without any pressure. Uh, and the WRX have another catalytic converter, which is before turbocharger. So be sure that it's not there anymore, or it will be probably in your turbocharger. <laughs> yeah, the, the up pipe, I believe the up yeah, pipe yeah. From, the, from the manifold. Yeah, that's this, what a lot of people this is correct. Uh, another thing, uh, it's easy, be sure what your filters is good, is a new, uh, your timing belt. So this is a Subaru and uh, yeah, the mm. timing belt is a... It's a, not a Subaru timing belt, sorry guys. It's, uh, I think, from Evo. Yeah, it's a set from Evo, but doesn't matter. The timing belt, uh, but better to have it like from Gates Racing mm -hmm. because it's uh, reinforced with Kevlar and other things. So it's much more bulletproof and yeah. normal one. Basically nothing special, but be sure what if if you have OEM stuff, it's it's good. In is good this a condition. Plate or what is this? Uh, yeah, it's oil buffalo plate. Yeah. So with Subaru, you will have uh, you will not have many problem with uh, 
uh, oil pressure from a side corners, so uh, the oil sump system. Unless did. Dimitri is driving. <laughs> <laughs> He's a too fast, just he was too fast for your car. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is just an uh, oil sump buffer, which is prevent uh, producing the bubbles and uh, other things. Uh, so basically, it means the less oil will come out from your ventilation system to the outside or to your air filter when you have something like this inside. Uh, Simple explain for people if they didn't understand. The engine is there, there's a pickup that sucks the oil from the carter to like to lubricate everything. And if you're going on the corners, a lot of G's, the oil goes from the center to the side and then the pickup sucks air and there is no lubrication on your engine and you're done. And with this, it prevents from oil going from left to right. But yeah, sometimes even that, this is not enough yeah. when you put the car in full slakes or something. Yeah, this is also the reason, but uh, another reason what's uh, your crankshaft, which is rotated here. Uh, don't produce the, how to say, form from oil or something like this. So when you have small pieces of oil, which, which is constantly in, uh, inside the engine and they come out uh, to the intake mm -hmm. because the system of, of ventilation connected directly to your intake. So this means the engine will eat oil. This is it. Speaking of oil. Yeah, speaking of oil, uh, this car, sorry for you guys, have no oil cooling system at all, except this, because it's a uh, unicorn and they put on one car, on one STI, they, they put this uh, uh, oil cooler system. Mm -hmm. So you should have it. You need to have it. Uh, this part is connected to the oil filter, so it just uh, mounted between your oil filter and the uh, engine, like this and have two connection with lines which connected here to your oil cooler. Also it have thermostat and uh, another two point of connection for the sensors if you want to know your oil pressure and oil temperature from the gauges. Subaru have really small engine and uh, really narrow bearings so the oil which uh, most people use on the track is a bit thick uh, sometimes is uh, going that hard and that hard, so 20W50 or 10W60, something like this. We prefer to have uh, a bit narrow range for the Subaru because you can warm up the engine before you race, but when you know constantly when you race, your oil is uh, thick enough to hold the power and to prevent spin the bearing in your engine. This is all about the oil and cooling of the engine. Then moving on a bit more advanced mechanical stuff. If you have WRX, your flywheel is around 14 kilo. If you have STI, it's about six. What does it mean? Uh, your shifting will be better, your accelerating will be better and everything. And also v vibration will be a bit more than on WRX. If you want to race your car, better to switch to STI clutch because it will be lighter and uh, it's just made for more power. Yeah, that's it. Next topic, it's a fuel, fuel system. So from easy to complicated things. Uh, Pre-filter in your gas tank. This is one of weak point because car is old and uh, you should have it clean because this part is 25 euro and it's easily, it's, it's broke much more engine than tuning. Mm. Because when it's dirty, it's working like restrictor, and then you broke your third cylinder. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so usually we change the fuel pump to upgrade the valve pump with pre filter and with OEM filter, which is uh, uh, under the hood. So actually, this should be somewhere there at the beginners okay. essential. Um, it should be, it's not about the, just a racetrack. It's normally should be done. Yeah, that's or, what I mean. Or you will broke your engine and it can be done easily. Why? I will explain you. Because on Subaru, you have a circle construction of a fuel system. Let's say this is one fuel rail. And this is the second one. And this is your pump in a gas tank, yeah? So it's connected like this. Pump to a one fuel rail, and to the second. And this cylinder is the last one, mm -hmm. and it will every time broke when you have problem with pump or problem with filter. 
So last cylinder will go lean, overheated, and broke with ring length or piston, or it doesn't matter. So when you want to have proper construction, uh, what we do in usually on a track cars, they made parallel connection from a pump to rails. And then here you connected uh, two lines to regulator and the uh, return line to the tank. So speaking of the rails, since you had them for the injectors. Yeah, uh, this is, this particular part is uh, for side mounted injectors, uh, how it, they call. It's uh, for USDM cars also for normal European cars and for GDM, we also have it here. Uh, for, uh, when we talk about the injectors, uh, as far as you go with tune or upgraded turbochargers, of course, you must have upgraded injectors. Mm -hmm. And please avoid the situation when your tuner cut your injectors to make them a bit bigger, <laughs> because then no one know how much how equal they will be. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. it. Next part of uh, our topic is uh, electronic side. So you can uh, tune your car with ECU tech or with open source software. Um, basically better to do it with a tuner who can do this. Mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, it should be done by professional. Uh, normally you can have uh, small things which will help you don't broke your engine. If let's say your fuel system start to work bad or something like this. So first thing, <clears throat> it's uh, not light. So when engine start, uh, when, when, when you have detonation in engine, so not uh, normal uh, working, but exploding the air fuel mixture inside your cylinder, this small smart system will understand it automatically and just start flashing to you. So normally in that situation, uh, you're driving somewhere on the track and let's say you have not enough fuel in your tank. And uh, we are near to Nürburgring, which have uh, right turns. Yes, Michel? Yeah. So your fuel pump is uh, on the right side. All your fuel, if you have like 10 liters, they go to the lights. Uh, this all 10 liters go to the left side. So you can have lean air fuel mixture and you will never know it. So you will feel like, okay, I am losing some power. Let's check it and go full throttle or something like that. And <laughs> then your engine is done. And uh, this just can flash in that moment to your face and you will understand something is going wrong and maybe don't go full throttle and save your engine. Yeah. Also, in case you are in some, well, non-Western European or US countries where you have um, bad fuel, yep. maybe this is uh, actually also something that you want to invest in to check that you have proper fuel. Next uh, thing is the gauges. Woohoo! Fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Normally you see like five to, I don't know, from one to 10 gauges in, yeah. in some Subarus. Yeah, it's old school, uh, we don't, uh, do this anymore. Basically, we put in the dashboards in the car, which is more modern technology, but same, uh, same sense, let's mm -hmm. say. Uh, basically, what we recommend to have if you want to just have one gauge and uh, that's it. This is an air fuel mixture. Uh, so you can see from, uh, from this gauge, uh, you go, your engine air fuel mixture go lean or ridge or it's normal and when you have some problem or something what you want to understand when you take a look on this gauge you will understand definitely what's going on if let's say your piping will come out mm -hmm. or your uh, fuel pump will broken this will show you yeah information is important just yep. like this uh, next thing is the intercooler so a lot of uh, owners changing the intercooler from a top position to the front position. Um, yeah, it's never ending story to talk about what is better for the Subaru. Of course, uh, front positioning of the intercooler is better to cooling the air, but uh, not for the cooling the engine. Mm. Because you will have another radiator in front and 99% uh, of guys who mount the front mount intercooler just half cut half of a bumper 
and then you will not have any diffuser, any system which will organize air flow to your radiator. So it will be, your car can overheat much uh, faster than with top mount intercooler. And uh, another like most commonly used argument is that the throttle response uh, well, the lag, yeah. the lag increase because you have more piping, more travel distance from so the air. So let's say this is um, one of the best top mount intercooler on the market. It's a process vest, Australian company. So just for understanding, uh, here is turbocharger and here is a throttle body. So it's the shortest way what you can have on Subaru and it's OEM construction. Yeah. When you have a uh, front mount intercooler, so from this point, to this point, you will have, uh, let's say something around two, two and a half meter mm -hmm. of piping and intercooler. So yeah, response will be a bit slower. So basically we, we're doing both. Yeah. Sometimes we, we install in top mount when you go to a racetrack, when you use car on a drag race or other uh, roll race events, uh, the front mount is good enough. It's really good. Top mount is good enough, you mean? Front. 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 Okay. Front. For the rolls race and for the drag race when you uh, don't need any response because you have your boost before you will start ah, the yeah, race. Yeah, yeah. The front mount is good and it's working good. For the circuit racing and not a lot of power, something like below 400, the top mount is really good construction. Mm -hmm. And you can also upgrade the bigger scoop like this car has. Yeah, that's for sure. But be sure your post guy will not throw your letters there. <laughs> okay, next thing of electronics is uh, something, let's say next level, what you can do. Uh, well, weak point of a car, uh, it's really old and it's first generation, generation of a car which have a driver controllable central differential. But this system is, uh, as I said, a bit old and it's a bit laggy. So I know basically a lot of drivers who prefer to drive in manual mode of this system because sometimes you can have not expected situation when your differential is locked and unlocked in uh, in moment when you don't when it's uh, not logical. Mm -hmm. So in that case. Uh, a lot of, not a lot, but basically five to 10 manufacturers made the new modern four-wheel drive controller. This is one of the best is a Motec. It's also Australian company. It's expensive part. It's more than 1,000, I, I think, if I remember correct, more than 1,000 euro. But when you can get your laptop in car and you can build your own program for four-wheel drive and it will do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Again, these are like more advanced parts. Make sure to start there and then eventually you finish here or maybe even somewhere beyond if you don't know when to stop in time. Yeah, if you will not stop in time when you need it, you will need this part. <laughs> this is guys, Subaru engine. Uh, this is uh, the last two liter uh, rally specification engine. So it's a uh, GRB Subaru. It's have really thick walls. So yeah, it's, it's really good one. And a lot of guys upgraded uh, the cars uh, to this engine case because it have, uh, it's much more rigid and just better. Yeah. Yeah, the other step would be if you can ever find EG22, which is a 22B engine with closed deck. I believe two and a half liters is also making closed deck, EG25? Or? No, no, no. And uh, that engine, what you mentioned, it's, uh, it's really old and uh, it's uh, not so rigid case. Mm, okay. So this one for now, it's a uh, best base for the high revving race engine like from 700 to 1000 HP, something like this. Wow. Yeah. How much does this case cost? It's not really expensive. Uh, 1500. Oh, wow. Like this. Yeah, that's 2000. Uh, no, two and a half liter engine case. I think 1500. And this one? But this one is uh, two with a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's it.
And of course, you can go crazy with aerodynamics and putting spoilers on and carbon fiber roof like this one. But this video is already close to an hour and imagine being it even longer. So we hope that we have covered the foundation to get you started. Oh, 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 oh let's wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. Wait. Weight reduction. Weight reduction. <laughs> carbon fiber battery yeah you can go that way as well of course and 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 far beyond uh if you have additional questions or you want to again go crazier with your car or any type of car shoot Oleg an email he'll help you out you can check out in the video description all the links to all the parts that you saw here so you can just very easily order them let us know in the comments what you think of this video in general and what type of car we should cover next i think it should be an evo uh Probably. Yeah, or we also know that a lot of people want to hear thoughts about Megans, so that's coming up as well. But for that, stay tuned and see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. We forgot a very important thing. A blow off. What's a Subaru without a blow off? <laughs> okay. So the sound. The sound that sold the sound. more cars than any commercial ever. Yep, the sound. Uh, so. What I can tell you basically is uh, if your blow off valve is working and it's not a plastic piece and it's not old, if you have no problem with this, you can leave it. Because this thing uh, basically more for the EVO owners because they have plastic bypass valve and uh, it's uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of guys have it broken. On Subaru it's a steel. It's a steel uh, blow off and it, basically I never saw it broken. But when you want to have the sound of a blow off, of course you can put it on your car. HKS. Yeah, HKS. yeah, yeah. <laughs> In same package you will have pop and banks because uh, your blow off will release the air which counted from mass airflow sensor. So your air fuel mixture will be not properly calculated and uh, made by ECU anymore. So half, not, not half, some percentage of the fuel will just be thrown away from your exhaust with sounds also. So sometimes uh, some cars have this pop. Is this dangerous for the engine? Uh, if you don't do it all the time, 99% not. Okay. But when you started before, I don't know, some shop and start to rev your engine and uh, do it constantly, of course you will broke everything. Yeah. It will be a problem if you still have catalytic converter. Ah, okay. So decat the car, put the blow off on and be the king. I didn't tell this. No, it was not me. <laughs> <laughs>